to dusk till dawn. It's direct to video sequels, yes. Really? Yeah. Oh god. I, how do you release two sequels in the same year? <laughs> uh anyway, uh it's the Dead Air Horror Review Show. How how is everybody doing out there in, in podcast land, the podcast universe? Um we yeah. love you, hi. TJ. Hi, thank you, thank you. No, I love you. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm I'm TJ, aka El Topo, and to my virtual right is Chris, aka Big Peen Chris. Um, <laughs> you really tried to get that to stick. Pat and I mean, I'm not, I'm not hating on it. I'm not hating <laughs> on it, but, but hey, I didn't I didn't see it, but it felt big. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, uh, so this <laughs> week we watched a true classic 1999's uh audition by auteur I, i'm gonna go and i'm gonna make a crazy statement here i legitimately think that takashi Mike, when it's all said and done is one of the greatest directors to ever live i was um, gonna say ever since i've known you i feel like his name has come up regularly when we yes, talk well films. i used to say it wrong for years i used to call him takashi mike but uh it's Mike. i just don't it's... know how to read it's M double I K E, correct? Yeah. Yes. Mike. Mike. <laughs> it's it's say it's it's when somebody named Mike pushes you off a building. <laughs> um, but no, like honestly, like Takashi Mike, he makes like literally his filmography is like he's made I think two years ago, maybe longer than that, he literally made his two hundredth film. Absolutely insane. Hundred films. And the thing is, is that while like obviously the the, the 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 I haven't seen I've seen probably I don't know 20 30 of his movies but I haven't you know what I mean that's just a, a drop in the bucket and the thing is is that to make that many movies you're like all right well he just like churns out movies like it's just a, a factory right like he's just an asylum director you know he just but like he puts a lot of craft in in these movies and he does so many different things you know you have a movie like this that i think is a pretty straightforward like psychological drama like psychological psychological horror drama kind of like a cat and mouse like horror drama but it's also rich with like social commentary which which we'll get into but i think is it's one of these movies and i, I say this a lot now but this is a movie that i feel like is is more for like nowadays like it was kind of prescient right like in in what it has to say about like kind of male fragility and ha like all this you know nowadays you got all this bullshit andrew tate alpha male like oh you gotta you gotta fulfill your role in society this this whole movie is just just consumed with the roles people should make and how like well you couldn't have this kind of woman because that kind of woman isn't the right one for you and you know what i mean like it, it's got very strong incel vibes absolutely the very start right and right away and, and and when you watch it, you feel like maybe like this this movie, if it was released now, would probably get canceled. But midway through the movie, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Well, this this well, is not what I, this movie is about. Well, I kind of think that if you made this nowadays, like if you made a shot for shot remake of this, then all the psycho uh like red pill Andrew Tate people would be like, Oh, this movie is woke. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, right. Because the, the male chauvinist gets fucking, you know, tortured. Uh, spoiler alert at the end of this movie. Um, but no, like he what I was saying is, is he's he makes stuff like this. He makes uh, a movie called uh, called Gozo, which is like his weird kind of David Lynch movie. He made a movie. He's made these really serious like um, crime, like Yakuza movies that are like kind of like a Martin Scorsese type vibe. And then he's made these like like I would say lately, but they're they're kind of older now. But he's made these more serious historical pieces. Like uh, he made he remade Harry Carey, which is fucking great, and he remade Thirteen Assassins, which I think is a fucking masterpiece. It's just I don't I can't think of a director that is prolific as him that's made that literally seems fearless to go to any genre and to still have like a style. You know what I mean? Like. I think this movie and getting back into audition, I love the look of this movie. I think mm -hmm. that like there's so many great shots in this movie and he plays around with the staging so well. And he, he like he uses a lot of space. There's there's a scene later in the movie that I really like where 
and again tj never remembers the name of any of the characters but the 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 male protagonist in the movie he's like looking for uh the girl Ayoma? Goes, Ayoma? A- is that Ayo- how you Ayomi. i do Ayomi. Remember that. yeah he goes he goes looking for her like residence and he goes to the ballet school that that she used to attend or whatever and he goes in and it's this dilapidated place but he's like way in the foreground and then there's this like guy just playing piano like way off in the background but like you just live in that space like the space is the way he shot that is so like ominous like you just that's that's a way i describe this whole movie there's this air even when it's like the mundane stuff there's this ominous like writhing like something's about to happen the whole time and then it to me it boils to a point and then it's just ridiculous like i and I, I also think, like, he's kind of known, like, at, at least for me, the, again, in the in 20 or 30 films, he's, even when he's got, like, a pretty straight movie, there's always at least one thing that you're like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> and the contents of Aomi's bag is the scene that that I always refer to as the scene where it's like, oh, the fucking train has just derailed off the tracks completely. I mean, in that, that, fucking guy with no like oh what like one finger left and no tongue oh. eating a bowl of puke it's like oh I, like i don't know if i've seen anything more vile on screen <laughs> like that was ever. a really really disturbing scene it was horrendously disturbing i guess we should get briefly into the plot of the film um uh it's pretty straightforward uh chris you want to take this i feel like i've been filibustering um sure so you have the protagonist, Iomi, who has lost his wife. Um, he's got a young son who was taken care of on his own. And he feels like, well, his son tells him, I think, you know, fast forward years later, um, the son's like, I think you're ready to, you know, be in a relationship again. So Iomi goes to his friend who's a um, who works in film and TV production and says, has this great plan of, you know, if you want to find the perfect girl, you should just audition them, hence audition, and we'll make a a movie or a TV show out of it. And, you know, you can find the perfect woman. And he's, well, he also is, at one point, he's just like, we might make the movie, we might not, it doesn't really matter. Like, right, you'll still, you'll still find someone. Um, And he's like, don't expect to find a 10, you know. Like, <laughs> well, something going back into what we were talking about briefly about the misogyny in this movie is, you know, th- something that's very common with all these fucking misogynists is they have these like these heretical kind of rules. Right. They have these ideas of how things should be. And one thing that that sticks out to me right away is he's like, well, you don't want you don't want the girl that's going to win the part. You want the one that's like yeah. almost won the part because you can manipulate that one more, basically. And like they're going to be more grateful. It's like, it's so gross. Like yeah. the whole, like, <laughs> like also we, we have to keep in mind that like the main character, the, the male main character who, again, who I, God forbid, I ever think of what anybody's fucking name is, but he's, he's like much older than the girls that they're auditioning. Like, I, I feel like he's somewhere in his like late forties, early fifties, maybe. I don't know if they even ever explicitly say, um, uh, his name is, his name is uh she gave I don't know how to say Oh this. his friend? Yeah, no. I don't know. Uh no, is his name June or Who? is the friend no the main character the the guy. Um I think his name is Shigar Shigaru Shihaguru. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I got the names mixed up. Yep, yeah. Sh- right. Shigaru is is the main the guy. Uh but anyway so again, they're they're auditioning much younger women, and there's a great scene early on when they actually go through the audition process, and they're basically like fucking doing like a dating profile thing. But I think that that Mike does a great job with kind of showing how lecherous they are without being exploitative, because like they they do he does like a lot of cuts, and then at one point like somebody's naked, and it's like it's kind of just like brushed over, but like. It's enough for the you as the audience to be like, oh, okay. Like it would be a little too much if like they all got naked. But I like the fact that they show that one of the girls got like that's enough to know you're like, oh, okay, this is you know what I mean? This is yeah. the level that these guys are after. 
Yeah, they, they and, just come off as total scumbags. But for whatever reason, you feel like the friend who's like setting up this audition yeah. is much more of a, a, a perv and, you know, just, just kind of like a jerk. Well, uh, misogynist yeah. than uh, how do you pronounce it? I, I don't know. <laughs> Shingahara, Shingaru? Sh- yeah, Let's Shingaru. Shingaru. Let's just say Shingaru. Okay, let's and go with that. Any any Japanese uh, speaking uh, listeners, we apologize. Yeah. I, I love uh, Japan, Japanese film and anime and manga, but I am terrible at pronunciation. We can English speak or Japanese. English. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, but um, here's the thing about the friend, right? And this is this might be a crazy take, but I almost feel like he at least at least he's more pure with his motivations, whereas uh, the main character he almost feels like he's like being like altruistic in a weird way. Like he's motivated by like the right reasons, which makes him even more delusional. You know what I mean? Cause I, yeah. like, I really genuinely think like he feels like he's almost not doing anything wrong or at least yeah. he doesn't recognize it. And that almost makes him worse. Like, at least to me, like I, I found his character like, so like, again, he's so unaware of like what he's doing. And yeah. I mean, that plays into the, the ultimate theme of the movie too because he's unaware that he's literally walking into like a fucking death yeah. trap oh he's he's completely naive and yeah. he gets played like a fool and it ends up costing him dearly as you'll find in the end yeah but you know this this uh uh asami i think asami. is her name yeah she uh asami yeah, yeah. asami much easier to say <laughs> asami <laughs> we'll stick with that why don't we just make up names ellen yeah. and ken Steve, uh, no. Steve and Asame. <laughs> Steve. Steve so, is the easiest American name. <laughs> I don't know. I would argue Chris or John. Chris is Chris, Chris pretty it's easy. I don't, Steve just rolls off the tongue. I don't uh, know. St- yeah, you're right. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, so you know, she goes into audition and has all these references and has all these prior jobs that she talks about. Um, and come to find out they lead nowhere. Yeah, everything she says is like a ghost story, basically. And and so uh, Steve and her go out on dates. Steve. And she, we're sticking like, with it, huh? We're sticking with Steve. <laughs> Steve and her go on dates. And he, like, obviously is, like, smitten with her. And I, I just got to give a shout out to the actress that plays Asami. She is incredible. I think like, this was she, her first acting role. It, amazing. She was a model. Um which should come as a shock to no one. She's beautiful. She's very pretty, I, yeah. yeah, I believe this was her first acting role. It's I mean, amazing because she she has such poise in this role. You know what I mean? Like she is perfect because she you can tell like even even before you really know what's going on with this movie, like the way that she is subtly manipulating mm-hmm. Steve is incredible. And the way that she carries herself in the movie like i feel like her character is so complex and weird and like i just i love how i love how even though you know she turns out to be this kind of insane sadist i i personally think and i could be reading this wrong but i feel like there's a lot of genuine thought in what she says like when she talks about her abuse and she's like opening up to him i think that's like real i don't think that's her that's not her putting on like a, a an air for him I think that's like legitimately her pain. And I think ultimately the reason that she is like this, you know, brutal murderer is because she can't, she can't like wreck the, like she's broken because of the abuse and trauma that she's been through. So she doesn't know how to like rectify that pain at all. You know what I mean? So she's just, it's she's, just, yeah, she's just her, her personality, her emotions are being pulled every which way. Right. You can see she, she like at times she wants also wants to be in a relationship and wants to be good. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's, and she she's... literally exposed herself like emotionally and physically to this guy. I don't think that was just a metaphor when she was like on the bed and just yeah, like, I don't... took yeah, all I don't her clothes so off. Um, and, you know, she, uh, the, the crazy thing to your point about the, her poise, I don't think really she ever spoke much above a whisper no this entire no, movie I, I, absolutely not. maybe towards the end when she's like unhinged oh yeah a little bit but that also like that again and and, and you know it, this also this is also is probably a little bit due to mike's direction 
But the fact that she goes, she's like a fucking pixie song, right? Like she starts out real low and then it just builds up. And when she's like out to the, the you know, the what's that pixie stock, the quiet, quiet, loud, like that's yeah. what her performance is. And when she, so it makes her, her violent turn that much more explosive, right? Because you've dealt with this very kind of stilted, quiet person that's, that there's this very kind of you know, soft-spoken, reserved manner. And then she's, you know, fucking garroting your foot off. You know what I mean? Like, I honestly stopped listening to what you said after the Pixies reference. I'm just so impressed. Uh, that was, what a great uh, thank game you, job thank right you. there. What, what an excellent reference. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. I'm not even the biggest Pixies fan, but uh, yeah. But no, that was perfect. They have some good, well they have done. some good tunes. Yeah. The yeah. Baster's um, great. Everybody loves him. <laughs> <laughs> music i could argue that yeah you know it, for those of you at home chris and i as big horror nerds as we are we're also huge music nerds so yeah we're very big uh nerds all around we never nerded out on the pixies though i'm uh, As, i can't remember I, I don't think so I, I got into them a little late in life i feel like but yeah i, I feel like i've never fully appreciated them yeah um, i'm with you on that I, like, like I said, I, I got a couple of their albums. I, I listen to them once in a while. Yeah. I love references, though. Thank you. <laughs> well, I also love <laughs> rock and roll documentaries, and that Quiet, Quiet Loud is a very good documentary. So I have it. I'll check have it out. That one. Yeah. Very good. Um, uh, what's his name? Frank Black seems insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he's like the consummate rock star, right? But doesn't yeah. like he's he's got the 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 legions of fans yeah uh he's doesn't really look the part so much no i always love the fat like, the fat rock star is an is an, an archetype that i really appreciate <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so, anyone who's given up on themselves physically right I oh really, i love it i love yeah, it i can I really it. dive with <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> back to audition um so yeah they they go on dates and eventually asumi kind of disappears right like um he uh you know everything seems like going well and then they i want to say it's after they 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 bone uh to put it in the most romantic way possible nice. and then she just goes away and then he goes into this kind of like trying to figure out where she went and he goes tries to find all her contacts and that's when he goes to the ballet studio and it's implied and later on more explicitly shown that like her caretaker like sexually abused her as a child or at least physically abused her i think physical abuse is explicitly stated uh sexual abuse is implied heavily um, and what they showed even though they didn't show too terribly much i hate it deeply disturbing it was disturbing and they it's disturbing i mean i'm not saying it doesn't work for the movie but like it's like they didn't show almost anything, but it just it stuck with you. It was very gross. Like, yeah. uh, in, in, and again, in a way that it's intended. Um, but then also he goes to the bar that he's that she said she worked at. And the guy's like, oh, uh, you know, they closed down because the owner got fucking diced up <laughs> and has one of the greatest. Like, it's not really a jump scare, but I fucking loved it where. He, the guy that used to work at the bar is explaining to the guy, oh yeah, like we found like a couple of fingers just like lying around. A couple and extra he, fingers just. But, the, but then Steve looks at the fucking bar and he sees the fingers and a tongue writhing around on the ground. Obviously he's just hallucinating it. But yeah. I love that scene. I was like, that was, I mean, I thought that was awesome. Like I yeah. love that just like quick like turn like flip the switch to this ultra like visceral thing and that character also, who was explaining it was really into the story mm -hmm. <laughs> like he, oh yeah yeah he was so invested in that story he was like yeah. you won't believe this you know and and I, I i gotta say every character in this movie played such an integral part in yeah the development like and and from uh, we, we, didn't even mention B. His, we didn't even mention his son but his son plays i mean his son is a pivotal uh plays a pivotal role in the beginning of this movie because he kind of inspires his father to get he's like well you need to get married again and also like maybe i'm wrong but like so uh so i'm I'm speed running through the plot so anyway so he can't find asumi eventually uh he does find her and then he's or no he doesn't ever find her right he 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 doesn't ever find her but then you see a, a pov shot of someone going into his house and spiking his whiskey 
and it's assumed he's spiking his whiskey. And then we're treated to like all these hallucinations that he's going through. And that this is when it illuminates on more of Azumi's past and her abuse, but also something I thought was really interesting. Um, there, there is scenes where he is getting like, uh, Steve is getting sexually advances, uh, sexual, getting sexual advances from different women in the story. And one of them is his secretary in the beginning of the movie. Again, we didn't touch on that, but there's like a weird, there's a couple of weird scenes between him and the secretary. Like she's looking for more from him than he's giving to her. So it's again, it's implied that he's been sleeping with her. It's kind of implied that he might have slept with his son's girlfriend. Yeah. Like either that or he's like coveting her. I don't know. Like that one's kind of up in the air. It's a little weird. Um, and then uh, Asumi is in there as well. And I, I don't know how you felt about this, but generally I can't stand like drug influenced hallucination scenes. I think they're like a cheap way. Well, you know how to... I feel about dream sequences. Well, this kind of is, yeah. Like, but I thought it worked. I thought, like, I thought it, like, it did. I thought it did a really good job of, like, really hammering home some of the shit that kind of was undercooked at that point in the movie. Yeah. Like, did, well, how did you feel about it? Did you think? Did you still did it? Just didn't work for you? Or? No, I. This is one of the very few times where I think it did yeah. work because you know what it did. What uh, Takashi uh, Miike did yeah. really well is that he. Um, so w when the hallucination began, he went to the place where you think, uh, okay, everything's actually normal. He was dreaming this whole thing, um, you know, because he's back in bed with Ayumi. And you're like, okay, maybe everything that's bad happening to him now was just a dream. Um, you know, because he goes up and washes his face and it, yeah, like, oh, everything. Oh, and you're teleported. Normal you're teleported back to that scene where they, they made love for the first <laughs> they time made love. Or, or boned as you right. said earlier. So you're thinking, Oh, <laughs> another dream sequence or hallucination or whatever. Like this has been done before. And then boom, he yeah, tosses no, you're... right back to the torture sequence. And you're like, Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. That, that I was not expecting. And yeah. I, I think it was great. I loved think. it. Yeah. And I, I, again, I really liked, I really liked all of the like there's a there's a there's a se sequence in this hallucination scene where he's at the dinner with Asumi again and he sees his wife and he's like, oh, I want to introduce you. And his wife's like, no, she's no good for you. But then like <laughs> keeps repeating it. And it's like really creepy. Like, I love yeah. that. Show. I thought that was so well done. And anyway, I, I have ahead. a question for you, too. And sure. uh, it just occurred to me that I don't know if this was uh, intentional, but, you know, there was several characters with their feet lopped off completely mm -hmm. several one of the characters was her abuser yeah another was the owner of the bar and she yes. proceeded to do it with steve yes what what was it about the feet that do you think that you think she was obsessed with because i have I'm, an idea i'm not quite I'm sure if it's it but i'm curious if you have any thoughts i noticed i noticed it as well I'm not entirely sure. I know that there is a very old Asian tradition of like foot binding. Mm -hmm. And that was like a thing like it's fucking disgusting. Don't look it up. It, it'll make you vomit. So, but they so literally gross. would bind women's feet like into a ball and like literally like make that they would bind it to the point where their feet would literally deform into like the, these weird, sh like horrible shapes. And it was a way to keep women more subservient. And I thought maybe that was kind of what they were going for, mate. Possibly. I mean, again, it's never explicitly stated in the movie, but it's a, it is a cultural thing. Uh, and and a, apologies right now if foot binding was something that they only did in like China or whatever. Like I could be wrong. I I might I I want. I think say it was Japanese also, culture. I think it was Japanese and Chinese, but I could be wrong. So. Don't kill me in the comments if I I will fully say if this is if I'm completely I can promise off. you that won't happen because we don't get any comments. Well, any. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Like this guy's racist. This, he can't yeah. even say this guy's name. He's calling him Steve. <laughs> well, we just don't want to butcher his actual name. Which yeah, I feel neither yeah, of us yeah. can pronounce. Yeah. Um. So, but anyway, what what did you think? I thought it had something to do with her um ballet career. That, oh yeah oh yeah that's right there yeah absolutely but i, I don't know that. if that's the case but it also she had somebody or she, i think she had mentioned that she didn't want these people these particular people to leave her and what better way to prevent that 
than just cut their feet off completely. Yeah. Um, it, so maybe which, it's one thing, maybe it's two things. I don't know. I don't know. Her abuser and the weird like prosthetic feet oh. that, that he made. Oh my God. What a fucking design that was. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that guy definitely deserved it. Um, oh yeah. Also, I couldn't tell what, like he was wearing like, like a, like a kimono that just had like words all over it. It was like, I yeah. couldn't tell what they were, but it, it was like, it looked like a sponsored kimono, which I thought was kind of hilarious. <laughs> um, that would be, so this, I feel like this would be a, that would be a perfect Christmas present for you. I'm oh, going to see yeah. if I can find Sponsored one. Sponsored kimono? Give me a Supreme one. <laughs> um, so this, this leads us to the most famous part of this movie, which is the torture sequence, which is, I mean, insanely brutal. I also mm-hmm. love the fact that Asumi, um, she knows evil acupuncture. <laughs> whereas like normal acupuncture is supposed to you know help you this is like the opposite where she stabs you with little needles and it's the most painful thing possible um also brilliant use of like sound effects that wouldn't work because they're little tiny needles but when she tings them it's like it sounds like a fucking iron rod yeah. and like ah, oh, it's so great uh at one point she she literally drives them underneath his eyelids which sounds like the worst thing i've ever heard in my fucking life uh, and then uh she her her weapon of choice, as uh, Chris has behind him there, is a garrot wire that she just she she tourniquets his foot and then just proceeds to fucking and it doesn't take long countries. at all. Oh, it's so disgusting. And and yeah. also I neglected to say that in in my little background there, she injected him with this shit so he can't move but he can still feel everything, which is a nightmare that I've had a lot. Like I. I, I mean, I've had a lot of surgeries as a kid and stuff, and I always had the fear of, like, waking up in the middle of a surgery. It's a fear that's, like, stuck with me through my whole life. So, like, having that, like, that concept of having absolutely no way of getting out and just having to sit there and deal with, like, unimaginable pain is just, it's her, it's just horrifying to me. Yeah. And it's so gross. Like, the whole thing is just so violent and disgusting. Now, this leads me to my one gripe this whole movie. I feel like the ending, specifically the ending of Azumi, is very anticlimactic. Like, the kid comes home, and the kid chases her up the steps, and he kicks her down the steps, and then the movie's over. And I'm like... You ca- I that, feel, like, like Not only does she s- chase him up the steps, but tell the listeners what she chases him up the steps with which i thought was a weird choice it's like isn't it like cologne or something it was like spraying them with something yeah 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 yeah. or some some kind of knockout spray but it looked like perfume it did not work if it was knockout spray yeah and And she tried to attack him from behind yeah (laughs) with the spray it didn't Um, work and it's like i kind of like i know i I feel like the movie's pretty short but i feel like give me another 20 minutes where like she's Maybe not torturing the kid, but maybe about to torture the kid. Then he figures out a way to like do something. I don't know. The, the running up the steps and just kicking her down the steps seems so like. Yeah, there should have been I, some more drama there. You're right. It's literally the only part of the movie. I, it's the only part of the movie I don't like. But other than that, this movie is an absolute banger. We, um, we did gloss over probably the if not the second most disturbing scene, the most disturbing scene. Which mm. is the bar owner that she has in a burlap sack? In oh, her that's apartment. the guy I was talking about earlier, with like one finger and yep. no tongue, and again no feet. I'm pretty sure his feet are also gone, and presumably she's just left that man in a burlap sack <laughs> eating her puke. Uh, and he that was to more me, than happy to eat it. I mean, that to that me guy... is the most disturbing part of that because you hear her in the bathroom like retching it up, and then it, oh god. Oh, okay. oh. It's so disgusting. God, it's so fucking. This disgusting. this is the world of Takashi Miike. This I mean, this is this really brilliant. is his. This really is his his standout film. I don't. I I don't know if I is still it, have. I is it have your the, favorite of his? No. No. What what would that be? That's a tough question. Uh pick pick one of two hundred. Uh, probably <laughs> probably thirteen assassins. To be honest. Yeah. I think 13 Assassins is a fucking masterpiece. I, I don't have the book. It, you might be listeners at home. I don't know if it's still published, but you can probably Google it. There's a great book by a guy named Tom Mess 
called uh, M.E.S.S., I believe. Mm. And it's called Agitator, the films of Takashi Miike. And it goes up to about Crow Zero, which I think is like 2003. It's really good. And he documents like all his movies up to that point. It's a great book. He also wrote a book on uh, Shinya Tsukamoto called Iron Man, uh, which is a great book. Uh, highly recommend both of those. I if if we have time, I feel like we should totally do an adjacent podcast that's just Takashi Miike films. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, there's um, so many. There's so many. And you know what I love about Takashi? I should have done Miike? an inventory of all the DVDs of his that I have. I should have just brought them out. It'd been a stack <laughs> like this tall. <laughs> on like a um on a tray and do the right uh, right. <laughs> um, he. One of the things that he is known for is his quick production times. Yeah, guy he was, probably, not mess he was around. probably shooting two movies while making this movie. That's this prob- was and I'm not even his, yeah, I'm not even one kidding. of his longest productions, and it was three weeks. Three <laughs> weeks. <laughs> three weeks. Insane. And he probably I don't know what the budget was, but it's probably like under a million dollars. And he like I feel- obviously you know converted or whatever. Yeah, this guy can make anything look great. He's just one of those directors. He's like your director's director, your director's favorite I, director, I should say. I, that's what I said. I mean, I, I legitimately feel like he is he is one of the greatest. Like, I, I'm not no hyperbole. And a lot of people would probably laugh at that because he has made some like silly movies. But the silly stuff is intentional. And I feel like he is I think he's unmatched. I don't think there's you could name another director that has done the breadth of work that he has in the different genres successfully. You know, I, I really can't think of any listener. But, this uh, is what he is, what you would call an influencer. Yeah. He, he, is, he is the auteurs auteur. I'm a huge fan. Anyway, it's uh we got about three minutes left. So what are yeah. the number scores? Yeah. You want to go first? Yeah. It's a 9.5. I, I really just don't like the, the ending ending, but it's still yeah. just such a great movie packed full of like, so much like i feel like this movie is very rewatchable too yeah. and i feel like i agree with with everything you said but i feel like this is a lesson in like very very precise screenwriting right every character matters every story beat matters there's no fat in this movie at all there's no like saggy middle it's just like everything you need it's got something to say it's very shocking so it's going to even if people don't really like pick up on the themes you're going to remember this fucking movie. You're going to remember the last five minutes, if nothing else. Like I feel like five, that comment ten. about the saggy middle was a shot at me. No, oh, no, 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 oh, not at all. Okay. Have you okay. seen this saggy middle? Come on now. <laughs> I could probably, uh, I could probably, you probably get two of you out of me. Come on. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of uh, here. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it, uh, oof. I, I don't want to give it the same exact score as you. I want okay. to. Okay. I'll give it a 9.6. This yeah. is a banger. I mean, it, for all the reasons you just said, there is no no fat on this movie. There's nothing that would need to be taken out to make this movie any better. Yeah. It is it's, perfect the way it is. It's absolutely it's it's it it a mo- the movie like this is so good and so well written. It's like you watch like I just watched the fucking Flash yesterday, and it's like why can't you be like this? <laughs> like that movie is overblown. <laughs> and poorly written and full of like yeah. just the most nonsensical bullshit and it's like look at this be like this it's perfect and the, the only thing that the only thing that holds is, is against this movie is it's so violent and disgusting that you can't really recommend this to everybody no. like i feel like it's so violent that like there's going to be certain people that are just going to check out they're not going to be able to deal with especially like stuff like foot getting cut off cuz like in an american movie She starts, she's about to cut the foot off and the sun comes in. Not this movie. Oh, she's, that foot is gone. Azumi's (laughs) dead at the end, but that motherfucker's foot is gone. Gown. And and you ain't getting that thing back either because she sawed clean through the bone. Like, you're (laughs) done. Like, that thing is done. She's a pro. She also, I forgot to, to mention that after she cut the cut the foot off, she throws it against the fucking mirror. <laughs> it just hilarious. bangs off of the mirror, and there's oh, like a so, blood stain. Oh, I love that. Oh, that was so good. I that, felt like that was a little comedic. Fucking, yeah, like, it's a little bit of a comic break for watching something that's so horrendous. Anyway, I, that's the movie. Yeah, we're good gonna call we're TJ. Gonna get off this before we get kicked off. 
Uh, we'll figure out what we're going to watch next week, but at least we watched a good one. We watched a piece of shit last week, we watched a great one this week. Yeah, so. this, this definitely, this was the redemption movie. Hell yeah. All right, man. All right, brother. All, All right, right, podcast people. Love y'all. Bye. Love you. Kiss, kiss. Bye. Kiss, kiss. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>